All right. So we'll see how uh, well this animation and some of the sound works uh, in this format. But uh, there is a video if you want to watch that, and you can also go download this thing. So this is a power app. Uh, quick, Real quick, I'm going to walk you through it. So we just saw on chat so some really cool enterprise corporate-type features. This is not that. This is a game. Why wouldn't you do that? That makes total sense, right? All right. So I'm going to spare you the great techno music here. Oh, yeah. All right. We're going to skip all the music for now. But here's the idea. So you come in here, and I'm going to play this game. All right. I'm going to play. This is a mobile phone game. All right. So we come in here, and this is a, uh, what is it called, Sokoban clone. So the old Japanese warehouse thing. All right. So you can move around, hit a wall. Ooh, ooh. All right. We'll go back. Move our crates. I screwed it up. We start the level. But you get the idea here. If I wanted to come down here and go up here. All right, we got one torch on. So that's good news. We just got to get those crates onto those lava spots. All right. But again, can't leave the walls. All right, let's go over here. Boom! There we go. We did it. Oh yeah. And so then we go on to our next level and so on, right? So uh, we've got several levels here. There's, I think there's six levels, right? I'll click through these. But how do we do this? Well, one quick thing first is we come back here to, to home here, and we can see we've got a character chooser. All right, so we can take our so guy. Yeah, we'll pick a zombie. All right. So we come back in here to our level. Now we've got a zombie, right? Okay, I do all sorts of things. You get the idea here. It's fun. I'll just play a game for everybody. It's awesome. All right. So go back here. I also got support here for right-handed versus left-handed mode, which, again, makes it very easy to do that uh, using power-ups and all the data binding. So I switched to left-handed. All right. So it's a mobile phone. So you can imagine now I need the controls on the left side, and the whole level draws itself over here. Okay. All right. Final thing that this guy's got, if we go back to home, which is now over here, Switch that back so I'm confused. It's got uh, some very exciting credits where, uh, again, this is primarily to show off that my kids tested this thing. They had a great time. All right, so what what did I learn? Why did I do this? Uh, the primary reason I did this was trying to learn a few things uh, that are not obvious from just doing, uh, you know, your standard forms, um, you know, three screens to edit, all that kind of stuff. So I went through and did some stuff. Let's take a look at this simple game. All right. So here we go. We got this on this screen. The main thing to note is on the on start is where we're going to set up all that level information. So, and Kevin, you're asking probably about 40 hours. It was very exciting. Um, and some of that was just trying to figure out why the heck was I doing this and what I was doing. Okay. So the main thing to note up here is there is a limitation right now for media references. You cannot reference them outside of just referencing the media part. But I wanted to do a string. All right, so I want to be able to reference these things by string so I can make my level design simpler. So I created this collection here of an image map that allows you to do some cool filtering. There's more details about this all on a blog, so I'm going to fly through it pretty quick. Uh, but I'll be happy to talk to you guys about any of this stuff. Okay. But down here, this is our giant levels variable, right? So it's just an array of these very exciting things. This is actually that first level. Can you see it? Sure you can. Um, so you can kind of see these are the outside pieces, right, inside here. This is the tile. Then it's one if it's solid or zero if it's you can walk through it. Uh, so I did it this way, so it was a little easier to do this, um, try and get an idea of how you could design those levels, and there's some details about the start, right? So we've got a whole array of these things. So that's what makes it possible to have this app only have four screens. Despite having six levels, those levels can be any number of things. Using that image map, you could create themed levels, all that kind of stuff. So let's talk about how do we take that array of, you know, little strings that indicate tiles and turn that into something Power Apps can use. All right, so in our level start, uh, we do this nice little thing up here. All we do is we grab the current level. Uh, one thing to note is I'm using indexes all over the place, so I just mean the index of the collection, right, so the item of the collection. Indexes start at 1. Why? Why? But that's what happens here. But you can see you got last, first in, pass the index to the collection, and then you can get that item. So it's a little bit convoluted, right? But again, you can see that more on the blog here. Um, by the way, on the blog, if you go over here, which I think David pasted it in there, but uh, you can download this thing as a zip file. Again, there's no data connections. There's nothing to set up. You can go ahead and bring it up um, and then play that in your own environment. And that'll be a lot easier to check this out if you want to see what's going on here. Uh, thanks, David. All right. So 
in here, then I'm converting those that background stuff into a tiles array using this nice little for all. If you guys haven't seen this, this is a way to take one collection, loop through it, and create another one out of it, uh, which allows me to use that image map here so I can convert the left value right of that string using that image map I created earlier, which makes it really easy for my tiles to reference what image it's supposed to be and so on. All right, then there's some other stuff. This is how you do a random, so there's a random tip on the bottom there. You do a shuffle on your collection, and then you're going to grab the first one. So, very exciting. Everyone getting all this? Perfect. Okay. So now, what's the actual thing happening? So let's take a look at the main game here. So if we come in here, here's, here's our level. All right, so the way this works is there are 140 images right here. And you can see them all. They're laid out in, you know, row, 10 rows and 14 columns. In those tiles, right, so we just pick one random here. Let's grab this guy. We're doing a cool thing, or not cool, um, I'm hijacking the border thickness. So the border thickness here, I'm not using it because border style is set to none. So I can hijack that so you can see tile number 47 has a 47 here. That way, in its in its image, right, we can actually, uh, let's see, I just kill the image. Let's click on one specific. All right, so the image, I can do that same indexing based on the border thickness and grab that image. All right, so I can grab that, I can put all this together, and that way, it doesn't matter as long as my model, right, so that I've put together with that for all on that levels, then these tiles will draw themselves exactly where they go. Now, by data binding the X and the Y, right, so I can see things where I've got the right-handed, they all move themselves over as necessary, right, but they also draw them in the correct spot based on their index, which allows me to have a, a set piece at the beginning uh, where I say how many columns and rows and what size those tiles should be, so that's just some real flexibility as you move through these levels. All right, so that's how those work. Uh, these crates, so these foreground objects are pretty similar. Oh, there's so many tiles. Let's go up here. All right, so if you look here, I've got, uh, we've got some crates. All right, so the crates work. Right, you can have up to five crates. So all they do is they just turn themselves off. If there isn't a crate object, they find out where they should move. So all Power Apps really is doing here is drawing my model that's just a variable or a collection at any given time. So there's nothing else fancy going on with that. So all I need to do then is update the model. So if I can update the model, then the power of power apps, it'll just draw it for me. I don't have to do any fancy things there. So the way I did that, um, and I don't know if it's a good idea. You guys tell me. What I wanted was I wanted a global function, right? That's not really a thing in power apps. But I wanted a way that, you know, the move logic is pretty complicated. I didn't want to write that four different ways, right, to determine how we can move if there's a wall, if there's a crate, if the crate touching another crate, if the crate against the wall, you know, play the right sounds. There's a lot of things to that. So what I did was I created this zero duration timer. This timer has a duration of zero. It does have an auto start set to this evaluate move context variable. And so all I'm doing is when evaluate move turns true, start the timer, It'll immediately execute the on timer end. And in the on timer end, I'm then doing all of the move logic. And then at the very end, I set that to false. So this acts as a sort of global function that I could then call. So the way I'm using that, we'll take a look at that again in a second, is if you click on the little D-pad here, this is all I have to do. I set up my quote unquote parameter, right, which is just requested move here. I'm saying I want to go left. So X minus one. And this is what direction the image should be rotated. And then I set that to true. So that calls that global function with this. So you can see all of these are just some variation of that, right? So down is just that, evaluate, move. By doing that, though, I get this nice global function. And if you take a look at that, there's a timer. There it is. All right, so we take a look. You can see I've got comments in here. By the way, if you're not aware of that, you just put strings, right? Put them in quotes, put a little semicolon on there. Do all that stuff. Very exciting. All right, but then we go through here, and this is just all we're doing is checking to see against our model, right, is the requested move possible? If it's possible, do the thing. Um, update a crate if you need to, right? Play a sound if you need to. That's what all these are doing here, and I'm just playing sounds by, again, setting a context variable, play sound walk. True, right, and I'm resetting those audio pieces. And at the end, all I do is I check for a win every time you move. So how did I test the logic? I just played the game a whole lot. Um, I also handed the phone to the children so they could uh, play play quite a bit. So that's the basic idea of the main game. Um, so you got all these different sound objects you can see down here, all hidden. Um, a couple things to note 
Uh, the whole final thing, it's not very important, but the credits, all this is is there is a brief collection um, of my credits that I created here, right? Boom. And all I did was I used a gallery, and, and I've got this credit scroll. So the gallery has its Y set to a variation of the value of that credit scroll. So it just moves up a gallery. It's not really very fancy. Um, but a couple things you can do. You can do a lot with timers. So, for instance, on the main piece here, this animation that happens here, where this guy is demonstrating what you're going to do in the game, um, I'm using a version of what I'm calling keyframe animation, where I'm just saying um, I only care about certain things, right, like when the image should shift based on that timer sample duration. Uh, you'll see this divided by six, and that was just to scale it right. So, again, I don't expect you guys to really care or pick up on a lot of that just yet, but feel free to download it. It's totally free. All the images are public domain. Uh, so you can make all the changes you need to them. Um, I did not make most of the images, just to be clear. That's in the credits, so check it all out. Okay. All right. So, yeah, woo! So sorry there were no horses in the game. Very sad, I'm sure. Does anyone have any questions or anything we want to talk about this? Yeah, there was quite a lot of, obviously, Iron Window discussions, as you can see. And uh, this is, <laughs> yeah, horses come to the level 7. <laughs> <laughs> you should actually do that. That's a surprise. What? Horses? What? Yeah, horse, what? That should be a playable <laughs> character. I agree. <laughs>